Hey, let's, let's have a round of applause for all the awesome panelists that have come out. Uh, Phil's still here. He's back there. Um, and, and these guys have been wonderful. So awesome, everybody. Uh, it's great to be here, and it's great to be sharing this information. Uh, as I know it's been said about 50 times, but this is all the stuff that I wish I knew then. Um, and more importantly, getting to meet people that are in the same phase of their career or levels above you, level, you know, it, it's all about the journey and the fact that we're in this together, you know, in some strange way, we've all kind of become a community today. I've shared some lunch with a lot of you. I've had conversations with a lot of you. So I'm super excited to be able to share this material um, because when you came here, you were like, oh, I want to come learn windowing strategy, right? Raise your hand if you... <laughs> when we do this again, I'm going to think of a really awesome name. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Anybody know what this stuff means? You don't have to define it. Just tell me what TVOD stands for. Anybody? Transaction. Okay. And and they said transactional video on demand. Correct. Uh, how about SVOD? Subscription video. Subscription video on demand. And how about AVOD? Well, advertisement supported video on demand. So these are the three types of video on demand that you're going to hear a lot of people talk about and, and most distributors talk about it in a way to make it seem as though it's some sort of secret code that only they know about. Well, I'm going to share that code with you. When we talk about windowing strategy though, I just want you to know that all we're describing, it's been thrown around a lot today, we're just talking about how to maximize the revenue of a particular product, of a particular film. So how do you release a film to maximize the revenue? And when it comes to video on demand distribution, that fits a little bit after theatrical, right? And so when it comes to video on demand distribution, there's ways that you release your film, again, to make sure that you make the most of it. So when we talk about TVOD, what we're talking about, as you already pointed out, is transactional video on demand. Put, put simply, that means that in order for somebody to see your film, they have to pay money for it. They have to transact. So that could mean that they click a buy now button on iTunes and they make a purchase or they pull out their, their television controller and they go into Time Warner Cable and they click Buy Now. They're transacting. They don't see your content any other way. The next one, subscription video on demand. We've had a lot of conversations about Netflix and we're gonna get into it a lot more, but subscription video on demand, simply put, is your end consumer has a subscription to a particular platform and they can watch whatever they wanna watch when they wanna watch it. Easy enough, right? And then finally, advertisement supported. AVOD, simply that. When you get your content into an ad-supported uh, ad platform, that platform will pepper your content with advertisements, and every time those ads are viewed, you get paid. So now that I've kind of gone through TVOD, SVOD, AVOD, I'm just gonna ask a little question here. So typically you'll start out, like I said, in transactional video on demand, you'll stick in there for three, six, nine, 12 months. In the case of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, maybe you stay in there for years and years and years and maybe you don't go to many other places. Now, there's one exception to this. If Netflix is interested in your content, they typically want you to go live right out of the gate 90 days after your transactional video on demand window. Think about that for a second. If you're doing really, really, really big numbers in TVOD, it may not make sense for you to take that Netflix deal. Or if they come back and they have a really, really good deal, you better get it to them and, and so they can get live 90 days after you go live in TVOD or, or that could skunk the whole deal. So these are things to keep in mind. I just love the dramatic like fade in, fade out, everybody else liking that. Uh, and then, then, as I mentioned, we go into transactional video on demand. We make as much money as we can there. Sales start to plateau or drop off. We move on over to subscription. At our company, Distributor, the first place we try is Netflix, right? Our team evaluates the content internally, just like any distributor, and we say, hey, do we think we could sell this to Netflix? If so, we flip it over to Netflix. If not, we talk to you. Um, and we say, hey, would you be interested in Hulu? Maybe we could uh, see what, what would happen there. And if Hulu's a no-go, we always have Amazon Prime. Now, again, Neil's going to go into this in much greater detail, but the difference between Netflix and Hulu um, is that Netflix is worldwide and, and Hulu is not yet. So Netflix may pay a little bit more. Netflix might want exclusive rights. A lot of the deals I've seen with Hulu have been non-exclusive. And then finally we have uh, 2BTV. This is an example of ad-supported video on demand. 
And again, similar to Netflix, or I'm sorry, similar to Amazon Prime, it's based on engagement. The more people that watch your content, the more people that see ads, the more money you make. So between Amazon Prime and Tubi TV, those are definitely some of the last places you're gonna go within the video on demand ecosystem, because once you're in these places, the barrier to entry is so low for people that they're probably not gonna go back and pay money for it on iTunes. So hopefully that all makes sense. This is me providing context for what Neil's gonna go into. I told you it was gonna be short and sweet, but any questions about this before I depart and uh, bring Neil up on stage?